Okay, so we're going to continue with borrowing and credit, which basically is the same thing. So the types of credit, we, talk, we talked about some of these, but um, they are revolving credit, installment credit, collateralized credit, and unsecured credit. They're, those are the main four types of borrowing or credit. So revolving credit, um, it, it, um, there's never a um, set payoff date. So it involves a maximum amount being loaned to the borrower by the creditor. So for instance, it's like a, a credit card. A credit card is a revolving account because on a credit card, they issue you, you apply for the credit card and they decide whether or not they're gonna approve you for it. And if they do, they set a limit of the amount of money that you can spend on that credit card. So maybe your limit might be $2,000. So you can borrow, you can go use that credit card at Walmart or you can use that credit card at um, Home Depot, any place you want, up to $2,000. So if you go to Walmart and you spend $500 on that credit card, then you would have $1,500 still available because you, out of that $2,000, you've only used $500. So you would have $1,500 still available to you to go and buy something else. So then you get a monthly statement, so you have to make a payment. So say you make a payment of $300. Then, they, then, then you, um, have a, um, you now have a limit of uh, $1,800 because you've paid $300 of that. So the, the amount constantly changes depending on the amount you owe within that $2,000 limit changes and revolves as you use your credit card to buy things and then as you make payments. So it's not like a car loan where you take out a car loan for four years or five years and the payment amount is exactly the same every month um, for the entire four years and then once you pay it off that loan goes away they give you you know it's they give you something that says it's all paid off and and it's gone but a credit card you can keep for as long as you keep making the payments and sometimes you know you might not make as as the as big a payment as you did the month before so it's revolving and that's why they call it revolving credit so an examples would be um, credit cards like we talked about and home equity lines of credit and that is where you borrow money against the value um, the value that you have in your house and we'll talk about home equity loans more in the mortgage um, chap, uh, mortgage unit later on okay installment credit allows the borrower to be loaned a certain amount of money for a set period of time so this would be like a car loan. So you're borrowing a set amount of money for a set amount of time. So you're borrowing $3,000 for two years or $3,000 for three years. You make payments every month, the same amount, until you get it paid off and then it goes away. So some examples include mortgages and mortgages are the same as a house loan. They call them mortgages, but it's where you get your, the loan on your house. Auto loans, those are car loans student loans and personal loans and personal loans just means that um, you're not you're not borrowing for any one thing you might be borrowing just um, for to go on vacation and there's no you know they there's no collateral there's no security in it so those are installment loans And then collateralized credit is a loan guaranteed to be paid by, back by putting a lien on an asset of the borrower. So we talked about assets before. So assets is something of value that you have. So a collateralized means that you're going to put something up, an asset up, so that if you don't pay the loan off or you, you uh, default on the loan, then the bank or whoever's lending you the money can take that asset. It's used as security. So collateral just means something that's used as security for the loan. So if you get a car loan at a bank, then the car is the collateral. And if you, they put a lien on that car so that you own it and you get to drive it, 
but it's not completely yours until you pay it off in the bank and the bank or whoever you borrowed says okay he's paid this loan off this it's free and clear and this is you know there's no lien on it anymore it's just like a house they um, when you get a mortgage or a house loan the house is the collateral and the bank or the mortgage company that gives you the loan, they put a lien on it. It's in your name, but they also have uh, interest in it too. In case you don't pay your payments, then um, they foreclose and that house becomes the bank's. And then home equity loans also are collateralized with the house. So unsecured credit is just the opposite of collateralized credit. So unsecured credit means that, that you're not putting anything up for collateral. So these kind of loans, you know, you have to have really good credit because you're just signing your name and the bank is saying, I know this person is credit worthy enough that they care about their credit score enough that they're going to pay this loan back. So that unsecured loans are typically people who have really good credit um, or decent credit um, can get unsecured loans and there's no they're just lending it to you on your name just the, your good name so they don't uh, take any collateral so you put nothing up like a car so you might want to borrow like we said before maybe you want to borrow a two thousand dollars to go on vacation to Hawaii okay so they can't take that vacation back from you you've already went so you're making payments so there's no security there's no collateral okay this example says if an individual has a high credit score and wants to borrow a hundred thousand from a lender the individual does not have to provide the lender with a securement for the loan a hundred thousand dollars is a lot of money to, to lend unsecured probably that would be a business and then credit cards we talked about a little bit credit cards are also unsecured there's no collateral on a credit card so they're also issuing credit cards uh, based on your ability to pay it back it allows consumers to borrow money from a lending institution and pay back some or all of it each month so they'll send you a statement and you only have to pay a minimum payment you can pay more but they only want you to pay the minimum payment because that's more interest that the bank gets over time. That it has a maximum limit to how much can be borrowed. Like we said on a credit card, the limit, you know, they're gonna set a limit, you know, whether depending on your credit score and your income, it might be 5,000, it might be 500, just depends. But they're gonna set a borrowing limit. And you, you have to sign a loan contract on a, credit cards but also when usually when you go to to use your credit card um, you have to sign it like debit cards you can put in your pin number but a credit card you know you have to sign your signature saying that this was you so a credit card statement so you get a credit card statement every month and it is a summary of the activity on your credit card for a billing period usually a month so you'll get, if you have a credit card, you'll get a statement every month and it's gonna have everything that happened on that card that month. If you used it, if you made a payment, anything that happened on that card. It should be reviewed carefully to identify and report any unauthorized charges or billing areas. And this is real important because um, even though you may have your card with you, sometimes people can get your number and charge on it and you don't know about it. I mean, it's happened to me on my American Express bill. Somebody charged um, $1,900 uh, for iPhones. And so we had to call, and it's happened more than, than once. We've had to call, somebody got my number. I had my credit card with me, but someone had gotten my number and used it. And so you have to call the bank, call the company, the bank that issued your credit card, and they'll fix those errors for you. So the statement you should review every month. So the statement will include the following account information. So it would have like the, at least the last four digits. Usually the credit card statement doesn't have your whole account number on it because somebody could get it in the mail and get your